everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm going to shake the camera because I forgot to plug it in, so bear with me. Um, we are working on uh, Voyage Beneath the Sea, um, and we are going to be on page four and five, so the center of the book. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to do one video for both pages because they're the same, just mirrors of each other. This is a pretty simple page. Um, we're going to have a large pocket. Sorry about that. A large pocket and a large flap. It's a pocket and a flap. This is our base um, pocket page. And there's our pocket. And again, as a reminder, this is 9 by 11. 9 by 11. The pocket is going to go toward the spine. And I will verify the measurements. This is 7 1⁄2 by 10 inches, seven and a half by 10 inches. You're gonna score a half inch on the seven and a half inch side, and then you're gonna score a half inch um, along the 10 inch side, and then at nine and a half. So basically a half inch on three sides, and then when you're done, you're gonna have a pocket that's gonna fit the height of the book. And let me find my book tool. Okay, so again, seven and a half by 10. Score half inch on three sides. And you wind up with a seven by nine pocket. Which is a very large pocket. And again, my goal is to be, uh, to accommodate at least four eight by 10 photos in the album. And we're gonna do page one and page eight have room for an eight by 10 and then page four and five. And then two, three, six, seven um, will not necessarily accommodate large photos. Okay, so there's our large pocket and then we've got our flap that's gonna cover the pocket. Keep that intact. Left. run in really crooked. I'm going to have to probably take that one apart. It's a little bit crooked. I'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and add the pocket to page five and it's going to go on the spine side. I did notice doing this large album. It's not that much larger than the eight and a half by ten but it's basically an, an inch taller and an inch wider on the, um, the pocket page, but it does make a big difference. Um, it, it's really critical. It's hard to mask um, if something goes in crooked when, when, when it's on such a large scale, just something to consider. Okay, there's our pocket, and then we've got a flap that goes in here. And I'm gonna double check and make sure I dry fit it because the other one I had trouble with. I'd like this one to go in straight and it looks good but I'm gonna do something a little different. Since it's so big, I'm gonna tack down one quarter, pivot it into place, and then pull the rest of the tape off the back. I don't usually do that for flaps, but I tell you, I do think it gets a little more difficult with this scale. This is how I put together my pocket pages though. Okay, there we go. So that's nice and straight. Opens like so. Now it's going to have a nice, eight by 10, large eight by 10 insert. That's gonna go right inside. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna straighten this one out and then I'll be with you guys in a minute. There's still some more features that go on top. So give me just a minute. Okay, sorry about that guys. Oh, I'm really drifting off the screen. Sorry, I wanted to adjust to make sure I got everything in the shot. Okay, so we have a um, page four, page five and Sorry, this is upside down. Okay, so they're going to open away from each other. So the pockets are gonna to be toward the spine, like so. And then there's one more feature we're gonna add. We're gonna add these pockets um, that are gonna have these little tags in it. These pockets are five 
Let me double check. Five and a quarter by five. So they're five and a quarter inches wide by five inches tall. And you're going to score a half inch on three of the four sides and making sure that the five inch is um, the height. So once you score it, you're going to have a four by four inches tall by four and a quarter wide. So I came up two and a half inches. Let me verify that. And we're going to install the first pocket right here. So come up two and a half inches from the bottom, install your first pocket. And by the way, you're gonna need a total of four pockets um, across these two pages. And this is the spine in the center of the two pages. And I don't know why I'm working out of order. I'm working on page five first, but we'll go back and forth. So we're gonna install this two and a half inches up from the bottom of the pocket page. There we go. And then we're going to install one more pocket and it's just gonna be flush with the bottom of the pocket page, like so. So you wanna make sure you get this one in first because this one's gonna go on top of it. And again, it's the same size. It's five and a quarter by five. Score a half inch on the five inch side, which is gonna bring it down to four and a half, and then a half inch on either side of the five and a quarter side. And then you get this this perfect pocket here. That's gonna go in like so. Okay. Then you've got um, a pocket on top, one uh, below it. We're gonna do the same thing on this page. So here's my reference line at two and a half. Then we're going to install the second pocket flush with the bottom of the page. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Now we've got our two tags that are gonna go in each of the pockets. There we go, that one got hung up. Oh, there it goes, now they're all the way in. Okay, so we've got our large flap, large pocket, and then we've got these two smaller pockets. Inside the large pocket is an eight by 10 photo mat on both sides. So lots of room to accommodate large pictures. This is um, six inches across. So if you put a slightly trimmed down uh, six, four by six inch photo, you could get four here, four on the inside, and then you got room for eight by 10 as well. So this makes, um, this is a lot of real estate for photos here and larger scale photos. So that is it for page four and five. When we get back together, at least that's it for the base part. When we get back together, oh no, it's not. Sorry, we need to um, put a closure on this. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna just add a magnet um, here and on the flap to keep everything uh, closed up. So, there we go. There we go. There we go. Good, good. Then we're gonna do the same thing on page four. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Now we're done. Okay, when we get back, we will decorate. Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We're working on Voyage Beneath the Sea and we are on page four and five. And they're mirror images of each other, so we're gonna construct them kind of side by side rather than having two different videos. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the functions of the page first. So we have two pockets, as you recall, when we were constructing it. We've got this large flap and then inside here we've got a large deep pocket. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna use this um, on the large flap. And I know it looks a little boring, but I'm gonna jazz it up as soon as uh, we get most of the large pieces in. <clears throat> and this is another page where you're going to be able to put down or uh, add an 8 by 10 photo in the large insert. Okay, here you go. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this contrast so I can better see my edges. There we go. That needs to scoot up just a bit. That looks pretty good. Looks great. All right. So, let's go ahead and do page five. Let's dry fit it real quick. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a strip here, and let me get that. Got one for each page. Here we go. And it's going to go right in here and right in here. And I'm just butting it directly against the pocket here the two pockets that are here, I'm using that as my guide. That's too heavy. Hmm. I need a little piece of scrap here, okay. Okay, so that makes a pretty little decorative strip right there. Okay, looking good. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is, let's go ahead and uh, open up and do the inside. So we'll do this side. So the large panels will be done. <clears throat> and then the rest of it's a lot of detail on the front. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, page five. Same thing. Let's dry fit real quick. Looks great. Okay, that's done. All right, let's go ahead and get our tags decorated. And all four tags are going to be the same. <clears throat> and we're using this blue. There we go. Okay, now if you buy the um, DCEs from us, we're going to send you some charms. And I'm going to go ahead and add some charms here. So I've got uh, some jump rings that I'm going to use. And then I've got um, a mermaid, a seahorse, a starfish, and a squid. And that's what I'm going to use on the four tags that I have. Me just a second to get my tools. So you really just need a couple of pairs of pliers to open and close your, your um, jump rings. And of course you'll want to do this after um, after you put your designer mat on. Now I'm using a large jump ring. And I don't know what size it is. It was just in my stash, but it's rather large because this is a large. Then I'm gonna use a smaller one to actually attach the um, charm to the, the larger jump ring. Okay, and then I'm going to add my charm. And of course, if you don't have jump rings, you can uh, tie them on with ribbon. Uh, would be a choice, or twine. Okay, and so there is the charm. I think it turned out pretty pretty. So if you use the two jump rings, then your charm will lay flat. If you don't, then it's always going to want to be on the side. That's the other reason why I use the two jump rings. You don't have to be two different sizes, but you really do need two. Otherwise, your charm won't lay flat. Okay, let's go ahead and work on the next one.
Okay, we'll take a large and a small. Sorry, I'm off, uh, out of frame. Okay, there's our starfish. I was just looking to see if this, uh, some of the charms have a side, uh, one side's decorative and the other isn't, but this one's the same on both sides. So I think the mermaid has a side. There we go. It's three. Now, let's see. Okay. Oh, look, see, I put her on backwards, so I'll just turn that around real quick. Or did I? Mm, I think it's okay. Yeah, she's going to lay straight. Okay, so those are our four tags and four charms. I think they look beautiful. I think they're going to look really pretty in the book. So we can set those aside now. Let me put my tools up real quick. I like to try to remember to put them up right away so I don't misplace them. And then I'm going to add... 
toss these in. And these are just jump rings that I get at um, Joann's in the jewelry department. You can uh, buy them in like little kits where you get several different sizes. And one of those packages will last you a very long time. Okay, so that's done. So let's pull our pages back in. So now let's go ahead and start focusing on lining the pockets so that we can take a look at what it looks like with those tags in. So I need a little contrast here so we can see the edge of this pocket. Oops, too high. Okay. There we go. Now, this is our liners for the pockets. The larger one, smaller one. It's going to go right here. Okay, so that's done. Put that in there. Put the Lady Mermaid in here. Look how cute that is. Oh my God, that's stinking cute. Okay, moving right along. That's part of the reason I use such a simple pattern here is because I knew I wanted to use the charms. And I want the charms to stand out and not disappear in the pattern. thing so we'll put the seahorse on top actually that should go down a little deeper it's hung up on something there it goes sometimes it gets stuck on the little flange yeah uh, on the bottom that creates the pocket but once you train it a time or two it'll start to go down every time okay look how pretty that is okay now I know this looks a little bland so here's what we're doing we're gonna add this so I've already matted um, these two, and these are coming off the signature page. And um, they're around that main image, and they face each other, so I thought they were perfect for this page. So we're going to pull this pattern back in. We're going to mat it. And I'll tell you the measurements, but they are based on just matting that. over that in just a second so once 
this was trimmed down and then matted with a 16th inch border. I measured it and then came up with this. And this is a smidge under seven and three quarters by three and three quarters, three and three quarters and just under seven and three quarters. And then we're just gonna center this. So you wind up with a half inch um, border mat. Okay, I think that looks great. And then this really becomes the centerpiece image for the page. Isn't that gorgeous? I knew I wanted to really feature some of these cut aparts. Especially this one. I was trying to figure out how to make it work on the cover and I couldn't. <laughs> it doesn't fit um, with the, the rest of what I was trying to do. So this was a good second choice. Let's go ahead and do page five. And my hubby just got home. So we're right at a breaking point. When I come back, we will focus on the inside layout of, the, of page four and five. No, so happy dad's home. I'm just centering it and eyeballing it. Okay, page five, page four. I think that turned out lovely. I think the charms really add a lot to the page. So like I said, if you buy the um, DCEs from us, we will send along some charms. Um, I always uh, tell people when they're using charms inside the book, always consider how they're going to close against each other and that they're not scratching on paper uh, uh, photos. Now, in this case, I intended for this to just be a showcase piece and not have a photo. So the photos will be on the inside, so there's no risk of these charms scratching your, your actual photos. So it's just something to think about when you're using charms throughout your book. So I'll be back, and when I am, we will line the inside, and then we'll also work on the large 8x10 insert that's in uh, both of these pages. So I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, I'm back. I've got the insides laid out now. So let's pull in page four and take a look at what we have. Okay, we had done this the last time we were together. I've got the liner and the pocket, um, the edge of the pocket that's exposed. I've got that selected. And I'm just dry fitting it real quick. It looks good. Yep. It is directional. There's faces inside some of the circles, so make sure you take a good look and, and uh, make sure you're putting those in right side up. And then I went ahead and covered the pocket inserts offline, but I'll go over what I did. So you can uh, duplicate it if you like. And I did some color blocking on it. which I think makes it a little more interesting, but it does it's a little bit more time consuming. Okay, and this is gonna slide slightly into the pocket. And I'm gonna to remember to leave my leading edge bare. So 
like I need to put some more glue on that corner. It looks like a little bit of glue right there. There we go. It's so hard. <laughs> a little bit too much. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to repeat that on page five, but I want to show you what I did for the insert. So I've just alternated this pattern. Uh, this piece right here is one and three quarters. Let me verify that. Yeah. So this is one and three quarter inch wide, and then the um, contrast strip is a quarter inch. And that's going to slide right into the pocket and looks very lovely there. Okay. So it's just not one single piece, it's a little bit more interesting. I'm just holding that down to make sure it's completely dry. That's page four. Let's do page five. Moving right along. Let's dry fit this real quick. Looks good. I've got about a 50% uh, 50 success rate at hitting the trash can today. Half the time I miss it. Okay, I'm just making sure I had it the right side up. right here so I can see the edge better. All right. I already inked it. So this is the leading edge. I'll leave it bare so it slides into the pocket more easily. Perfect, perfect. And then, of course, here's the insert. So I just repeated that. Again, these are one and three quarter inch wide, and then quarter inch strips. And then this is just trimmed down to fit, which in this case is five and three quarter inches. But um, go ahead and check it. Um, once you put install these two strips, verify it and do both edges, then trim out the middle. And you'll be much happier with the result. Okay, page four, page five. I'm still toying around with the idea of possibly adding a trim piece down here. I haven't decided. So for now, we're gonna call it finished. Um, if I do anything else, you'll just see it in the walkthrough. So thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, page four, page five. And when we get back, we'll continue working on the album. Be back soon. <laughs>